Hi, this is Tucker with your high frequency words for the new SAT. This is list number seven. Our first word is adept, and this describes, it's an adjective, it describes someone who has specific knowledge or skill in a particular area. So you could be adept at playing an instrument like the piano, or you could be adept at a particular type of sport. So just having a particular skill, somebody might be adept at neuroscience, where they just have a lot of knowledge about that particular area. The second word is clinical. This is also an adjective, and it describes someone who is emotionally unattached. So it says that usually this is used in the context of medicine or the medical field or even in scientific settings where, for example, doctors often have to give patients really hard news. You know, if a patient comes in and they get tested and the doctor has to tell them there's something wrong with you or we've diagnosed you with cancer, they have to be kind of clinical or emotionally disconnected or unattached from the person that they're giving that news to. They have to be kind of strong and um, clinical about it, focusing on the actual problem, how they're going to treat it. They can't get emotionally involved in every single patient's situation. Otherwise, that would be an incredibly exhausting job. The next word is desolate, and this is an adjective as well, and it describes something that is bare, barren, empty. So maybe like a college student living on their own for the first time might have kind of a desolate apartment. There's not a lot of stuff in it. I often think of the desert landscape when I think of something being really desolate, which is just these open spaces of really bare ground that are kind of free from grass or vegetation. They're just very bare because they don't get a lot of rain in the desert, so lots of plants can't survive there. So it tends to be fairly barren and empty in terms of a landscape. Emphatic describes someone who is very expressive, tends to use a lot of emphasis. I often think of people who kind of gesture a lot or gesticulate. You know, they wave their hands around when they talk or they use a lot of inflection in their voice when they're speaking, which means, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on particular words and phrases. And so anybody who is emphatic kind of shows a lot of emotion in their expression. So for example, the a tennis player might have like a really emphatic response to winning a big tournament. So if you've ever watched the US Open at the end, often they'll like fall to their knees and yell and scream because they're so excited to have won. The next word is entail. This is a verb, and it means to involve or include something. And so when I think of the word entail, I'm reminded of, you know, what is entailed when you're studying at college. Or for example, I'm working on my doctorate. So what is entailed when you're working on your doctorate? A ton of studying, a ton of reading. You have to attend a lot of classes and do a lot of work. That's part of the process. So it is entailed in the process of working toward a specific degree, all of that studying and attending classes. The next word is imprudent. This describes something or an action that is not cautious, not prudent. Um, It's a synonym for the word rash, which we covered in a previous list. So if a decision is imprudent, it means it might not be a really great decision, or maybe it's a decision that was made really hastily. Um, So for example, I would think it's imprudent if you're on a trip to say Costa Rica and you see that they're offering bungee jumping for, you know, tourists. I would not do that, but some people might decide like just in the moment, kind of make a rash decision, what I would describe as an imprudent decision and say, you know what, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to go bungee jumping in Costa Rica, I'm going to do it. The next word is nuance, and nuance is a noun, and it's a subtle difference in meaning. And so nuance, you know, we just painted a a room in our house, and I was deciding between two different colors that are basically white, but they're different versions of white. And I was asking my husband, like, which color white do do you like more? And he looked like 
looked at me like I was crazy because he thought they looked exactly the same. There was just a small nuance of difference between the two shades. Similarly, when somebody is making a face at you or maybe they say something like, uh, good job, are they really meaning good job or are they being kind of like sarcastic and putting you down? Or if they they wink, is that like a inside joke wink? Is that like a positive thing? Is it kind of like making fun of you? Is it, you know, sometimes there are expressions, whether they're expressions on your face or verbal expressions, things that you say that may have a kind of a difference, a, a different nuance or meaning based on the person's intention or the situation. And the next word is inversion. And inversion is a reversal. So if you think about standard gender roles, the things that people expect of like a woman in a marriage versus a man, oftentimes in the past, I think this is changing a lot, men were seen as going to work and women typically stayed home with children. However, I think gender roles are changing. And so there's a lot of situations where there has been an inversion in the traditional gender roles, where maybe the woman has a job, a high-powered job in an office, and the dad might stay home with the child and be the stay-at-home caregiver. And so this would be an inversion of a traditional kind of gender role or what, what would be expected maybe of a woman and a man in a marriage who have a child. The next word is opine, and this is a verb, and it means to openly express an opinion. So if you look at the word opine and you look at the word opinion, hopefully because they look very similar, it'll help you remember this word. But now that there's we're heading into election season, I feel like I'm hearing just constantly politicians just kind of opining on the issues like healthcare and and taxes and what they're doing is expressing their opinions about what we should do about healthcare and taxes but you know they they opine on these issues to try to communicate these are my opinions this is what I plan to do when I get into office and the last one is pinnacle and this is a noun and the pinnacle is like the highest level of something so maybe the top of a mountain range is the, the pinnacle of the mountain range or highest level of like a degree so thinking about um, going to college maybe beyond that getting your master's working toward your doctorate those are kind of the pinnacle like earning your doctorate is probably the pinnacle of you know the education system it's kind of the highest level you can get to. But every profession has its own kind of pinnacles. And so if you think about actors, the pinnacle of an actor's career might be that moment when they win their first Oscar or when they win an Oscar, right? Like the highest achievement that they or the highest recognition that they can earn in that particular profession.